All right, coding friends. Glad to see you back. We're going to do a tips and tricks for websites. So if you're working on uh, code.org, I'm going to turn that video off. That is not looking very good, is it? If you're looking for some help in your website, this is definitely a place to go. So in here, we're going to go ahead and get started. Now, I just went into an untitled, um, just an untitled worksheet from code.org. To get in there, I will show you what I did. I went into code.org. Now, if you're doing your actual lesson, you would just go into your lesson. But in code.org, we can go in and we can do other projects. So that's where I'm at. I went to view the full list. And you can see Web Lab right here. So that's all I did. I went into Web Lab. It opens up a blank document. I'm going to close the other one I had open since I got two. And it's just an untitled project. Okay. I could rename this. I could just call this tips and tricks. There we go. All right. So we're ready to get started. So one of the main things I need to do is make sure my style sheet is linked and code.org does that automatically for us. In fact, they give us all this code to begin with. So they do the doc type, the HTML header. Um, they do our head. They put in our style sheet. Remember, most of our work is going to go right here in the body and then they close out that HTML. So let's jump in and get started. Now, this is going to be a multi page website. So first off, I got to get some information in here and I think I'll just jump in. I've got this little blog that I have where I write a bunch of different things and I've got a little book that I've been working on. So I'm going to scroll down real quick. Oh, that's book five already. Book two. So I'm just going to grab my first book right here. So I go down and I'm going to grab all this information. Now this would be whatever you were going to make your website on. So I've got my book. I should probably call this book, but I'm going to put this in here. So I'm just going to hit control V and paste it. So here you go. We've got this book in here. It's just mainly information, right? It's about computer science. So in here, I need to go out and I hadn't titled this yet, so I'm going to give it a title. And I would go in and put in my H1. Right? And I would close with my H1 tag. There we go. We've got our first H1, our first tag in there, which is our title. Now, the rest of this is just paragraphs. And we're going to stop it down at this probably right, right around in here. We'll make this our closing paragraph for that section. Breaks that out. Now, I have the book in sections. It doesn't really break it out that well in here. Remember, we could always use the BR tag as well to put a break in. But I'm going to break it out this way with paragraphs. Okay. I got to go through and put all these paragraph tags in. So that's an opening. I'm going to go right here and do a closing. And it's starting to break it apart. I can see it forming here. Put in my next opening and my next closing. And then opening and my closing. Oops, I forgot my closing. There we go. Okay, I have that all broke out. I know it's not very interesting right now. It's all just paragraphs with one title. But now I'm going to go in and do a little bit of styling on here, okay? So I'm going to jump over to my style sheet. And this is all things that code.org automatically put in. My background color right now is white. My paragraph color is black. And my H1 is bold. Okay, I'm going to go change that. White's kind of boring, right? So let's do 
Uh, I'm going to do light blue or let's do sky blue. I don't know if sky blue is in here, but we're going to try. Oh, yeah, much better. All right. So now my background of my website is blue or sky blue. My paragraph is still black and my H1 is bolded. I like that. A little bit of style in there. Okay. We're moving along. We're doing good. I think I need an image in here. Okay. So we're going to go, and I don't want to add CSS or HTML. I want to add an image. And I'm going to upload that. Now, here's the thing. I don't know that I've got a lot of good pictures for this. I should have downloaded some um, before. I've got my grandson in there. That's kind of a silly little picture. Um, but let's see. We're just going to go in to my camera roll. And we've got this little guy from code.org. And I'm just going to upload him. File uploaded. There we go. All right. Now, here's my captured image. Now, remember, that's not necessarily a good name for this. To rename that, click on that and just. So as I hover over, you can see the little arrow popping up. I'm going to click that little down arrow. I'm going to go to rename. And we're going to call this. Um, let's just call it code.org. I'm not going to put in the .org um, because it might interfere with my file naming system. We don't want any of those special characters like a dot. So I could put code and then I could do a capital O-R-G. So I could do code org like that would work fine. So I like that. That's in there. We're going to go back into our HTML. And I'm going to put this picture at the very top right underneath my h1 so i'm going to click at the back of the h1 i'm going to just put an enter in there so i've got a line eight and i'm going to put in my image tag it's img it's starting to pop up for me if i click on that it makes it a little easier sometimes it'll self fill the src so i have img s r and there it's popping in and when i click on that the nice thing about using these little click downs is it puts in that the equal sign and also those quotation marks and pulls up. Hey, what file do you want to add? Well, I want to add that PNG. Now, I need to put in my alt. And do you notice it already popped it up? I hit that space. There's my ALT. And I'm just going to say um, code. Uh, oops, com, code comic, because it's kind of a, a comic from code.org. And to finish that, I need to put in my here then sign. Now, you can see that it popped up over here. I'm going to go to the expanded view so we can see that. When I click on that, you can see computer science, this journal prompt. Then I got the rest of my book down below. So it's coming along okay. I'm liking what we're doing. To get out of here, it's got this little, the arrows pointing towards one another. There we go. All right. That's going well. We've got our style sheet linked. We have an image in here. Now we need to add another, another picture, okay? Or not another picture. We need to add another page. But with my picture, I was thinking, you know what? I need to give attribution to this. So I'm going to go in here. I'm going to add an H6, okay? So I put an H6. I'm just going to put this image is from code.org. All right. Oops. Now I need to close my H6. There we go. Now when I look at this, 
I can see that. Look at there. It's captioned. It's not captioned, but it actually gives where that came from. So there's my source on that image. Making sure I get that attribution on there. Okay. So here we go. We're moving on. We have that. I'm going to go up and add HTML. Now it just says new HTML when I do that. And this is what I'm going to put rename and I'm going to call this book two. So I'm going to put my second book in here. Now guess what? Up in the style sheet, it's not linked, nothing up in the head. So we have to link our style sheet onto there. So I've got my book too. I got my HTML. I'm going to go back. Now here's the thing. I could type this out again, right? But why? I can just go and copy it and paste it. Remember it's link. REL is my style sheet. And then my style sheet is this style.css. So I'm going to go to book two. Up in the head. Remember style sheets go in the head. I put that in there. Now this sheet or this page is linked to that sheet, to that style sheet. It's the same one. We're using it so that they both have the same look. So save refresh, just make sure that happened. All right, now I'm gonna go get my book. I got book one, here's book two. We'll grab that. They're just little short sayings. You're more than welcome to read them. Um, I may publish them at some time, and then you'd have the opportunity to read it that way as well. So in that body, I put that in. I'm going to use this book two. That's going to be my heading. That's going to be my H1. I'm going to put in a closing H1. Okay. Boom. Now, just like I did the other book. I need to go in and put paragraphs. Now I'm going to speed this up a little bit. I'm going to put a paragraph at the beginning and a closing at the end. That makes it all one paragraph. Now that's not really how it looked when I pulled it from when I pulled it from my my file over here, right? It had all these spaces, kind of like little paragraphs that were separated out. Another way I can do that is I can go in here and I can hit an enter. Now it didn't do anything over my code here, but I can do dr. And I can go here and do dr. And hit refresh style. And I'm breaking up my code a little bit here. Not so much over here, right? So we're going to jump over and we're going to do some linking of this. So I got to decide where do I want to be able to do my link. I'm going to do the link on this one. I'm going to put some text down here at the bottom that says back to home. Age. Yeah. Okay. Now here's the thing. I have to get this put back. So I have to turn this into a link so it'll get us back to the home page. Sorry about that. I've got a little section for the camera down here where it was blocking that line. So line 15 was hid from me for a second. So to do that, we're going to do a reference. So here we go. I'm going to put in the link. So it's just an A. And then I do href. And it picks it up for me and gives me my choice. Now I'm on book two. I want it to go back to index. Remember index is our home. So that's where I want to go back to. Now I'm going to do my greater than sign. This is what I want people to be able to see as the link back to home. Or I could just put home on there, right? And then I'm going to do my closing A. And there we go. Back to home page. I click that. 
and it takes me to my homepage. Now, here's the thing. I don't have a way to get to book one or this is book one. I don't have a way to get to book two. So to do that, I need to make my navigation. So I'm going to put it at the very top. I'm going to create home and book two. Now, here's what I probably should do is I could even make another page and call it book one. So I'm going to do that with all these. Are you ready? So first one, same thing. Attribution right there, that A space H ref. Now, A, home is going to take me where? It's going to take me to my index HTML. And I'm going to do that. And I'm going to close. That's right. Closing A. Now, home is there. Now I can do the next one. Does it matter if I hit enter and put it right here? No. I'm saying, hey, do you want to make this? Now, here's the thing. I don't have a book one right now. I'm going to add that real quick. We're going to go on here. We're going to rename this. We're going to call this book one. If I have book two, I have book one. I'm going to go back to my index page. Book one. Now, oh boy, I got carried away here. H ref. And this is going to go to book one. I should have made capital since the other one was capitalized, but it doesn't matter. And it's going to link to book one. I got to do my closing A. Beautiful. Home, book one. Now we're going to do book two. I'm going to go here. I'm just going to move it down the same way I did the other, just to keep my code a little bit more readable. Space H and pops up my H reference. This one goes to book two. That's where I want it to go. Now I want that to be my words. And I want to close this attribute. There we go. Home. Of course, it's not going to go anywhere. I'll go full screen so we can see this. So I can go home. That's here. Book one. There's nothing on it, right? Uh, I can't get back. We've got to close this. Book. We're going to go back to index, and I'll do it again. Book one has nothing on it, so I can't get back. But book two, here's book two, and I can go back to home. So it works. Book one needs some work, right, because there's nothing on there, and I can't get back. But it's not a big deal. We can go in and program that later. What I'm going to do now is we need to do something with a class, okay? So I'm going to take and put a class on here. We're going to do class. So pops it up for me, equals. And we're going to call this, I don't know, first. So here we go. We're going to go into our style sheet. So I have a class on this paragraph. We're going to go into our style sheet. I'm going to hit Enter. I'm going to do dot first. Squiggly. Okay. I did not put a space there. I'm going to hit enter and separate those out. So here we go. We've got this first. Now we're going to add a little bit of stuff on here, right? This is my first paragraph. We're going to do font size. So I can just start typing in here and get all kinds of ideas, right? So I've got text align. Well, we could do that. Or we could do font family. And we could do something like cursive for this first one. And remember, we always close that with a semicolon. So there's font family. What else might I want to do to this? Maybe I want to give it 
a color. And we want to choose, let's do, okay, we'll do that one. I was going to do antique white. That's all right. So now when I go and look, ooh, antique white, let's hit refresh. And look at this. Now antique white doesn't show up real well. No, no, no. <laughs> Not a good one. So we're going to get out of there. For some reason, I lost my E on blue. Now let's see if it shows. Oh, there it is. I like that now. Yeah. So just the first paragraph, when I created that class, just the first paragraph was changed, right? So that's pretty cool. I like that. I think I might want to change it a little bit more. So I'm going to. And maybe we're going to do. Let's see. I'm going to do some font size and we're going to make it bigger. We're going to go 20 pixels. See if that, that's a little bigger. We could go a little bigger even, but you get the idea. First paragraph is changing. If I go over into my other page, my book two, nothing changed on there because I don't have a class on there. Just this one's used in the class. So that I'm liking it. I really am. I'm going to go back in and we're going to add a little bit. I don't like that image being so square. So let's go back into our style sheet. Okay. And I'm going to go and add an image, IMG, space, my curly brace, enter. Now, you know what? I want to float this to the right. So I'm going to float. And I'm going to do right. And I'm going to make it smaller. So I'm going to do that with the width. Right there's our width and I'm going to make it 250 pixels. Look what that did. It floated it to the right and made it much smaller. Now I'm, I'm liking this. Let's do a border. Border. But we're going to do border dash color. And I'm going to pick out a color, um, aquamarine. And we're going to, semicolon, can't see that yet, but it will be there. Trust me. We're going to do a border width. Border width. And, you know, we could choose one of these, or we could put in a pixel amount. I did medium, or I could do like 10 PX. Now, I'm not seeing a border yet because the important part is we've got to give it a style. So I probably should have done this earlier. Border. Oops, I forgot my dash on there order style. And you've got all kinds of them. This groove is kind of cool. And there we go. You can see that. I'm going to go full screen real quick. You can see that happening on there now. It's got this cool border wrapped around it. All right. The other thing you might want to do is maybe you're not liking how that border is just square. So I could do border. I keep not just typing this out. It's crazy. But a border radius. And maybe I want to do five pixels. And it kind of rounds it off. If I do more, 25, notice it gets more rounded. Now, it might not look as good with the groove. You can see how those colors don't line up. So I could change that from a groove. I could go with just a solid. 
Now I have a solid border around there. I mean, it's your choice. Go ahead and, and play with this. But these tips and tricks that we just went through, this is pretty much everything you need to know how to do in order to do all of the levels in code.org, the CS Discoveries, so Computer Science Discoveries curriculum, all the way through Unit 2. This is the stuff you do. <coughs> Excuse me. So I hope you find these tips and tricks helpful. I hope you enjoyed this. Remember to like and to share. And hope you guys have a wonderful day. And continue coding. Practice makes better. Happy coding.